Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. This video was requested a lot, so what we're going to be making is a button that you can click on. And every time that you click on this button, you're going to earn some form of currency. It doesn't have to be money, it can be anything you want to. But basically the way it works is every time you click, you get one of whatever currency you're going to be using. Alright, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started by designing the button, and then we'll go ahead and work on the scripting for it. So to design the button, we're going to start with the starter GUI. Inside the starter GUI, we're going to add a screen GUI. Inside that screen GUI, we're going to be adding a text button. And go ahead and rename that text button to click button, just like I have here. So a capital C and a capital B. Don't worry about this for now. We're going to be adding the sound later. For this part here, if you click on it, this is how you're going to customize it. You're going to be customizing it using the properties menu. If you don't have that, go up to the view tab and then click on properties. And that should give you this menu right here. So some different things you can change. You can change the background color. You can just click right here and select new color. To get the white border, what I did is I selected a border size of three and then chose a white border color. Down at the bottom, the other section you might want to change is the text. So you can choose a new font if you want to from the drop down menu. You can also change what the button says. So for now, I just said click me, but you can change this to whatever currency you're going to be using. I would also recommend that you choose text scaled. This is going to maximize the text size for the button. In addition to that, you can also change the text color right here, just like for the background color. After you make all those changes, I would recommend scaling the button, and you can do that in two different ways. You can use the plugin. So the plugin is called Auto Scale Light. If you don't have this plugin, you can get it from the toolbox. So just click on the toolbox. You're going to change the drop down from whatever it says here to plugins. And then you're going to type in the name of the plugin. So we're going to be looking for Auto Scale Light. And it's this one right here. So you can just click on it and then press install. The other option for scaling the button would be to change the size property. So right here, you want to make sure that you're only using the first set of numbers in each grouping. So this stands for the percentage of the screen. So my button takes up about 14% of the screen going left to right and about 0.6% of the screen going up and down. So if you have anything for the second set of numbers in each grouping, change those to zero and then adjust the first set. It's a lot easier to use the plugin, so that's what I would recommend. To use the plugin, all you have to do is press unit conversion and then under the size option, press scale. Okay, after you make those changes, we're going to be adding a local script inside the button. So you can just click on the plus sign and then add a local script. The first thing we're going to do in the script is make a variable for the button. So we'll say local button and that's going to be equal to script dot parent. After that, we're going to say local click name. Make sure you have a capital N and this is going to be equal to whatever currency name you want. So I'm going to choose money for mine. After that, we're going to say local cooldown and we're going to set this equal to false. This is kind of an optional thing we're adding to prevent the player from spamming the button. If you're not concerned about that, I can show you later on how to adjust the script. All right, for now though, we're going to move on. Down below our variables, we're going to say button dot text, and that's going to be equal to click name. So that's the name of our currency. We're going to use two dots to combine it with a colon and a space. Outside the quotation marks, I'm going to put two more dots, and I'm going to combine that with the number zero. Before we move on to the next part, we're going to be adding a remote event inside of replicated storage. So to do that, just click on the plus sign, click on remote event, and then you're going to rename it to click event. Make sure you have a capital C and a capital E. Once you do that, we can move on. So we're going to start by making a variable for the replicated storage. We're going to say local RS is equal to game colon get service. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put replicated storage. Next, we're going to make a reference for the remote event. So we'll say local. This time we're going to say click event. And that's going to be equal to RS colon wait for child. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put the name of the remote event, which is click event. Next, we're going to define what happens when our button gets clicked. So we're going to say button dot mouse button one click colon connect and then function. Inside the function, what we're going to do is say click event. And then after that, we're going to say colon and fire server. OK, so that's all we're going to do for now. We'll be coming back to the script in a little bit. But what we're going to do now is add a script inside a server script service. On this script, we're going to start by saying local click name and that's going to be equal to money so make sure those two values match the one from this script and the one from the local script 
Next, we're going to set up a folder for the player to store their money value. We're going to do that by saying game.players.playerAdded. And then we're going to say colon connect. Inside the parentheses, we're going to say function. Inside the parentheses next to function, we're going to get the player that joined the game. And I'm going to shorten that to PLR. Inside the function, I'm going to start by saying local player stats. And that's going to be equal to instance dot new inside here I'm going to be making a folder I'm going to give that folder a name so player stats dot name and that's going to be equal to player stats inside of quotation marks next we're going to store with the player so we'll say player stats dot parent and we're going to give that to the player now that we have the folder we're going to create the value so we'll say local clicks and that's going to be equal to instance dot new here I'm going to be creating an int value and just like the folder I'm going to give it a name so I'm going to say clicks dot name and that's going to be equal to click name and then I'm going to say clicks dot parent and we're going to store that in player stats next we're going to be defining what happens whenever that remote event gets triggered from the local script so let's go ahead and start by copying these two lines because they're going to be the same in this script right here after that, we're going to say click event dot on server event. And then we're going to say colon connect and then function. Inside the parentheses next to function, we're going to get the player that clicked the button. And inside the function, we're going to say player dot player stats. And then we're going to use square brackets. And then inside here, it's going to be click name. The reason I'm using click name instead of directly referencing money is so that you can change it up here and you don't have to worry about it throughout the script. Okay, so whatever currency you're going to be using, we're going to take the value of it and we're going to add one. So that's going to be plus equals and one. All right, so that part looks good. So let's go ahead and head back to the local script. Down here, we're going to say local player and that's going to be equal to game dot players dot local player. After that, we're going to say player dot player stats so that's what we just defined in the other script and then we're going to say square brackets and click name outside the square bracket we're going to say dot changed colon connect and then function inside the function we're going to say button dot text and that's going to be equal to click name we're going to use two dots and join it with a colon and then two more dots and here we're going to say player dot player stats square brackets click name and then on the outside we're going to get the value okay so what we're doing is on the local side here is we're triggering a remote event that's connected to the script over here whenever it triggers a remote event it's going to add one to whatever value you're using and then back on the local script anytime it detects a change for that value it's going to change the text of the button to display the new value. All right, so let's go ahead and test it out so far and see what we got. Okay, so I'm going to try clicking on the button and we'll see what happens. Okay, so nothing happened. So let's go ahead and check out the output and see what we did wrong. Okay, so I have a red line right here and I'm going to click on it. This shows me the line of code that was causing the error. And we can see right here it should be player stats instead of player stat. So let me add an S there and we'll retry. Okay, so now I'm going to click on this button here. And it looks good. So one thing I could do right now is click it really fast. And if your players might be using an auto clicker, you may want to prevent that. Um, so let's go ahead and modify the script a little bit so that we can add a cooldown. Inside this function right here, we're going to add a couple lines of code. So we're going to say if not cooldown. So if we're not in a cooldown period, then what we're going to do is we're going to say cooldown is equal to true. And then we're going to add this line of code in here. So I'm going to do control S to cut and then control V to paste. And then after we trigger the remote event, we're going to add a wait time. So let's say maybe one second. After that one second wait time, we're going to say cooldown is equal to false. All right, so let's go ahead and try it out now. So now the maximum clicks I can do per second is one. So no matter how fast I click, it's only gonna increase every one second. If that's too slow, you can always make that a smaller number. So you can try something like maybe 0.25, which would be a quarter of a second, or like 0.5, which would be half a second. 
If you don't want to use any cooldown, but you want to keep the script the way it is, then just make this blank. Okay, and the last thing we're going to do is add a sound to our click. To do that, I'm going to open up the toolbox. I'm going to change the drop down to audio. And then you can search for whatever you want to. So if you're doing monies, maybe something like cha-ching, money sound, or something like that. I filtered the results between 0 and 2 seconds. To do that, what you're going to do is click right here. You're going to go from 0 and then choose 2 seconds. And then apply. And this just brings all the results between 0 and 2 seconds. So a short little sound whenever we click. You can preview the sound by clicking the play button. Once you find one that you like, you're going to click on your button and then click on the sound. Just to make things a little bit easier, go ahead and rename your sound to collect. And then on the script to player sound, what we're going to do is right below the fire server, we're going to say if not button dot collect. So that's the name of our sound dot is playing. So it's going to check to see if it's already playing. If it's not playing, then what we're going to do is play the sound. So we'll say button dot collect colon and play. All right, and that should do it. So just remember, if you want a cooldown, make sure you put the value right here. If you don't want any cooldown and you don't want to adjust the script, then just leave it blank. All right, so let's just go and test everything together and make sure it works. So I'm just going to open up the output to make sure we don't have any errors. I'm going to click on the button. And you probably won't be able to hear it, but there is a sound playing. Every time I click this button, once the sound finishes, then it plays again. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for the next one.